Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, the Bay Area's premier author interview program. Now, I have to welcome somebody today, but I don't know really how to welcome him because in Chicago, for example, he's called America's finest political hatchet poet. Now, you may know him as as Calvin Trillin, the the deadline poet, but is this true? You are America's finest political hatchet poet? I think I'm the only one of those, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, that would make you the finest. That's it? right, because yeah. uh, I think there's only one other person on the continent doing what we call deadline poetry on the news, and uh-huh. that's uh, John Alamang in the Globe and Mail in Toronto. Uh, and well, we are the only two members of IDPO. On, the, on the continent. Yes, yeah, the International the Deadline Poet Organization. Yeah. Well, the reason you're here is to talk about your new book called Deciding the Next Decider, the 2008 Presidential Race in Rhyme. And it's a very nicely put together book published by Random House. Now, you've been a deadline poet for 18 years, once a week in the nation. And it's yielded books like Obliviously On He Sails, the book that's very hard for radio interviewers to say. Right, it's notorious. And, and a book called A Heck of a Job. Which is easier. Much, much easier. But I don't think you've ever undertaken either a I'm, – I'm not sure anymore what we must call this because in some places I see it described by your publisher as narrative poem. Right. And then people on national public radio today called it epic. What the uh-huh. heck is it? I mean, it's long. Um, I think long poem is <laughs> – I don't think we should be afraid of the word epic, Jim. No, I kind of like yeah, it. Yeah, I think I can, epic is a nice word. Yeah. Uh, I and, like it better than narrative. I mean, yeah, yeah. Narrative yeah. sounds like some writing uh, class term. <laughs> I think I think epic is, is what it is. It's a it's – a, I think I can't remember something like 1,300-line poem on uh, in rhyming couplets – Yes, 1,300 in, lines of rhyming couplets, it uh, says someplace. That's right, interrupted by uh, a number of other poems, uh, which are sometimes regular poems, sometimes country songs, sometimes parodies of existing songs. And, and, and some of those sidebars, if you will, appeared in The Nation, and some of them are original yes. uh, to, yeah. this, to this epic presentation. Yeah, and the epic poem is all new. Yeah. All new. All Brand new. new. It's not Brand an old new, epic. Just out of the factory. It's a new. It's got the new smell to it still. <laughs> why Why did you decide to do this? I mean, you're, you've been a journalist forever, and maybe you'd like to do <laughs> some journalism around the campaign. Right. Why do it this way in, 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 po- in poetry? You know, I've compared it to the guy who does a model of the— Palace of Versailles in beer cans. Um, I mean, the answer is just one thing led to another. I, I had these cans, and I had all these Budweiser cans, and then the Coors cans came along, and I thought, hey, Somebody the said, get could, him the hell out of the garage. That's right. The <laughs> Brooklyn lager cans could be uh, the towers, and so it just one thing led to another. There you were. I don't know. I got started. Uh, in the first place, I think I was curious about why about whether I could do it. Mm-hmm. And also, um, even though the, the poems I write for the nation are, are normally fairly short, and um, I, was, uh, I used to write very long poems when I was sort of a special occasion poet, you know, writing... Yeah, the, up writing the, birthdays and bonuses. Yeah, the and... sort of uh, rehearsal dinner uh, poem and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I thought I'd try um, a long narrative poem and uh also it was it was such an interesting race I and mean, i thought that there would be enough in it to do mm-hmm. what was there and and maybe this is not a good question to ask but i'm terribly curious what was there a a real creative supportive editor at, at random house who said you're you're crazy but do it well he 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 he, he what i did first is I wrote a, a part of the first chapter ah. to show him what it would look like. Okay. Because I, I found it hard to imagine that anybody could imagine this. Describe uh, it. Describe yeah. it. So, so I, I, yeah. I really, it's not the sort of thing I ordinarily do, but I, I just wrote a bunch of it. 
first place, I was going. I was trying to make sure whether I could do it, yeah. and and then uh, show him at least what it might look like when it got through. And it, and it was pretty much uh, what the first chapter was. Now the uh, this is an extraordinary uh, publishing project, in my opinion. Right. I mean, I've not ever had an epic poet sitting across from me as as you are. It must today. be quite an honor for you. It, I, I feel honored. Right. I, I I feel honored. Now a, uh, a a woman Machiko Kakutani yeah uh, must have felt honored too. She attempted to review this book in the New York Times Daily in verse. She did yes. Um, well, I appreciated that. Um, it w- it was um, and also it was a nice review. Um, I think, of course, if if you're the subject, and now I realize what those politicians feel like. If you're the subject, you sort of would like it in prose. <laughs> All right. Just on the horizon at this point uh, in, in, in the book uh, is a long shot bet. And we're going to hear about this long shot bet as well as some other people when we come back. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Now you can find this program on iTunes, SoundCloud, and all your favorite digital outlets. Follow the show on Twitter at Jim Foster COC and email Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. Deciding the Next Decider, that's the title of the book. The subtitle's incredibly important. The 2008 Presidential Race in Rhyme, an epic poem. We should, this should be on the jacket. An epic, epic poem, poem right. by Calvin Trillin, published proudly, proudly by Random House. Right. Publisher of the odd epic poem. Not, not often, but now and then. If an epic poem comes along, Random, Random House, House will, will publish do it. it. Yes, right, I, right. I think that's... Now, you actually start this book back in 06, the midterms, and, and you acquaint us with people we've forgotten about, most notably one George Allen. Yeah, the um, chapter two begins, which is called Almost Rand's Republicans begins, Republican insiders once agreed when contemplating who'd most likely lead their presidential ticket in 08, George Allen was the perfect candidate. He fit what's often valued by the right, quite cheerful, Reagan-esque, and not too bright. (laughs) And you cover uh, uh, some other people from that point, from that time, uh, Al Al Gore, for for right. example, who right. who might put his hat in the ring, but decided not to. He was too involved with uh, things ecological, with warming. The book really, you know, gets interesting for me at uh, when we get to the fourth part of it called Obama Rising. W- would you read some of that to us? Some said sure. Barack. Some said. Um. Some said Barack could well afford to wait. He had, they said, no end of times to run. In 2012, he'd be but 51. According to a long-established tenet, he should mature for years yet in the Senate. Producing legislation at a trickle, some Senate members don't mature, they pickle. Obama, thinking time would not improve the chance he had, resolved to make his move. He went to Springfield where he could invoke the spirit of Abe Lincoln as he spoke, to thousands cheering in the bitter cold. He may have been by many fans extolled, but Pro said it was still a long-shot bet to think the nominations what he'd get. When faced with Clinton's powerful machine, they said he might collapse, like Howard Dean. Experience was what he seemed to lack, and to be frank, they pointed out, he's black. That says it. I mean, that... Was the problem at the beginning of the campaign, in the middle of the campaign? Right, that's true. And even and even yeah. towards towards the end. But I I caught that on television live, and I I, I couldn't believe the number of people who were freezing their fannies off right. in the cold of Springfield, Illinois. I just I just yeah. couldn't. And and I thought to myself, this is something. This is something. Right. But still, even even with that scene, uh, I think he was still thought of as a long shot. Oh yeah, for a long time. Yeah, no, no, he was. Now there were other people uh, who were uh, managing to uh, get involved. By the, for example, by the time we get to Iowa, there's a huge bunch of uh, candidates. 
among them John Edwards. And uh, on on page 27, uh, you have a poem called, Yes, I Know He's a Mill Worker's Son. Would you read that? It's very important. Yeah, it's called, Yes, I Know He's a Mill Worker's Son, But There's Hollywood in That Hair, a country song about John Edwards. He grew up poor in Carolina shore. He's not a fake. He comes from folks like us. I like the sound of what John Edwards says, but why's his hair the kind that plain won't muss? Yes, I know he's a mill worker's son, but there's Hollywood in that hair. He whacks the corporations where it hurts. His plan is best for caring for the sick. His wife's a gem were nuts about the kids. But lordy, that man's pompadour's too slick. Yes, I know he's a mill worker's son, but there's Hollywood in that hair. Sure, I know he's got substance and grit, and judging by hair is not fair. Yes, I know he's a genuine guy, and there's plain people's values we share. Yes, I know he's a mill worker's son, but there's Hollywood in that hair. And there was more than that. Yes, I'm <laughs> as afraid it, so. As it turned as out. As it turned out, right. <laughs> yeah. One of the others in the uh, in in the field was uh, Mitt, Mitt Romney, uh, who— uh, though he was from Massachusetts, was trying to make everyone forget that he ever was near the state of Massachusetts and its liberal politics. And there's a, 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 a one call on the news that Mitt Romney's finished first among Republicans in first quarter fundraising. Uh, to play the role of President Mitt Fit, his jaw is square, no wives have ever split, his mug's unblemished by the smallest zit. On looks alone, a jury would acquit. But Mitt's campaign was not seen as a hit on every poll he lacked by quite a bit. Then donor forms all candidates submit revealed a bunch of money went to Mitt, which means each donor holds from Mitt a chit. So Mitt, as candidate, is now legit. The pundits now aren't writing Mitt so bit. If one thing counts, they think, then money's it. Now here, in the midst of the epic, we have what the poets call a monorhyme. That's right. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's where every line rhymes with the same uh, rhyme. Well, we're going to stop now because we must pause because next on our agenda are some words for and about Hillary Clinton. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Now you can find this program on iTunes, SoundCloud, and all your favorite digital outlets. Follow the show on Twitter at Jim Foster COC and email Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. This is Jim Foster. It is Conversations on the Coast deciding the next decider, the 2008 presidential race in rhyme, an epic poem. Epic. By, yeah, you by, could say that again. Epic, epic poem. Epic yes. poem. I, I said all the syllables, right. didn't I? Yeah, epic's fine. An yeah. epic poem by Calvin Trillin published by the epic poetry publisher, Random House. House. And I did a lot of peas without popping. I noticed that. Yeah, that's, well, this is, this is where you come for sophisticated right. broadcasting. Now, one of the people, uh, groups that you seem to have something against, uh, people call the Sabbath gas bags. Those are the people on um, Sunday morning television talk shows, yeah. Uh-huh. The, um, and they're... Um, they speak with great certainty, even though in this campaign they were wrong 100% of the time. <laughs> Tell us one of the times they were wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, they for one thing that they said after – first they said that, that Obama couldn't win Iowa. Then after he won Iowa, they said Hillary was through. Um, so then there's a poem here, The Sabbath Gas Bags Reconsider Hillary Clinton's Inevitability. The winner for certain was what she was called by gas bags until in the caucus she stalled. The gas bags predict now her certain defeat. For large bags, they're really quite kick on, quick on their feet. <laughs> that, that's when they said that she, she would be gone for good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, they were wrong, I guess, all the time, except at the end when they said that, that uh, Obama was going to win. Obama was going to win. Now, there's another aspect of uh, uh, Hillary's uh, uh, candidacy that uh, has to be taken into a, into account, and it's something called Bill. Yeah, there's there's a poem here called 
progress from the 2000 campaign. Oh, I'm sorry. The Democratic, the Democratic primary, primary version. version of Hickory Dickory Dock. Yes. Which is Hillary Dillery Dock. Hill ran into Barack. So Bill got shrill defending Hill, Hillary Dillery Dock. <laughs> and he did. He, he did. did. It, mean, it was the same. And there's a song in here uh, called He's, he's Still My he's Bill. Still My Bill. <laughs> uh, which is a like long came Bill. He wouldn't shut his trap. He yammered it at the churches and at the shopping mall. <laughs> but if he gets me votes, he's still my bill. Still my bill, <laughs> right. The end of this book talks about election night, and it's it's a very a very moving uh, part of this epic poem. Could you share that with us, please? Sure. The fear that the election might be stolen could give a Democrat a spastic colon. Despite its technoprops, TV seemed slow in telling voters what they had to know. And then, almost abruptly, they could say, Obama is to lead the USA. McCain, a man who admirals begat, now did them proud. His gracious speech showed that, however flawed the fall campaign he ran, he is himself a good and decent man. Obama spoke to thousands in Grant Park about the road on which we now embark. And many thought as he described that walk, yes, here's how presidents are meant to talk. The TV showed the dancing and the cheers and African Americans in tears. And foreigners from Rome to Yokohama were cheering an American, Obama. From this vote they were willing to infer we aren't the people they had thought we were. And Lady Liberty, as people call her, was standing in the harbor somewhat taller. And the last embedded poem in the book is Race in America, November 5th, 2008. The curse is not broken, as some would deduce. The curse is so strong we may never break loose. But now, at this moment, we cling to the theme set forth by the man who said, I have a dream. It's so wonderful to express that connection. And it's, it's, you know, obviously a connection that Obama made several times yeah. in, 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 the, in the course of the campaign. And I think it, it, it really is where he lives and really is where he comes from. I think so. And and, and on the other hand, the, he, he's, he's not afraid to let people know that there's a different side to that. Right. There are people who who have dreams but hate at the same time. Right. One of them, you know, was his pastor. Right. And uh, for him to, you know, give that talk on race— at that time, I, I thought was one of the most courageous things yeah. that I'll ever see. Well, I think Jeremiah Wright brought out the best in both candidates, uh, the speech that Obama gave on race yeah, and uh, McCain's refusal to use Jeremiah Wright in the election campaign, which would have turned it into a campaign on oh, race. Would have been would have been absolutely, absolutely horrible. Right. What, as the... Uh, uh, there, there's not another epic poem in you. Will you continue to be America's favorite, most revered deadline poet? Our highest paid, also. Oh, I uh, forgot um, that. The uh, yeah, I will continue. I continue to that. Also, <laughs> the most reviled and ridiculed. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. It I, all it all comes with with well, the territory. Well, if you if you can multitask, yes, yes. right. Yes. <laughs> the book is deciding the next decider. The 2008 presidential campaign in rhyme. An epic poem by Calvin Trillin. This is Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. Now you can find this program on iTunes, SoundCloud, and all your favorite digital outlets. Follow the show on Twitter at Jim Foster COC and email Jim Foster COC at gmail.com.